Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about the Blender 3.0 and Cycles X launch. It's been out for about two weeks now but I've just now gotten around to testing it out. And yeah, that's basically what we're going to do today. We're gonna have a quick comparison with my 3070 Ti here in Blender 3.0 and a Blender 2.93. If you didn't know, about half a year ago the Blender Foundation announced that they were going to make some substantial changes for optimization in their Cycles render engine and thus Cycles X was born. Now, about half a year later, we have the first official release that houses Cycles X and that's why I'm pretty excited about this. To be honest, I wasn't expecting that big of a difference between Blender 3.0 and 2.93, but now that I've done all the benchmarks for this video, I have to say I was really blown away. But we're going to get into the benchmarks a bit later. First, we're going to talk about what role software plays in 3D rendering, and it's a lot more important than most people think. How fast an image can be rendered mostly boils down to three factors. The render engine, the hardware that is being used to do all necessary calculations, and an API that is in charge of communications between the two. The render engine could be for example Cycles, Redshift, Octane, or the newly released Cycles X, that of course depends on which 3D modeling software you are using. And the hardware could be a CPU or a GPU, mostly nowadays GPUs are being used because they are a lot quicker for parallel computing, and as you probably know, almost all desktop GPUs come from either AMD or Nvidia. The API, that is short for Application Programming Interface, could most commonly be OpenCL, CUDA or Optics. When you hit render, you simply give your 3D scene to the render engine. Without getting into the nitty gritty details of path tracing and stuff like that, the render engine basically just shoots a bunch of rays from each light source and then decides how that light reacts with the objects and their materials in the scene. To calculate this, the render engine gives some instructions to the API, which then decides on a lower level how to actually run that calculation on the hardware. Decisions in the render engine on how the rays are shot and how the interactions with materials and objects are handled can have important speed implications. How well the API can take any instructions it is given and utilize the hardware to get the necessary results also has an immense effect on how fast an image can be rendered. A general API like OpenCL knows how to take instructions and run them on a wide variety of CPUs and GPUs. It's basically a jack of all trades, but it can't use all hardware to its full potential. Optics, on the other hand, is very specialized. It only runs on certain NVIDIA GPUs that fulfill certain criteria, and its only goal is to run ray tracing algorithms as fast as possible on that specific hardware. Because NVIDIA knows exactly what hardware is available and how to get the best out of it, they are able to optimize this pipeline between the render engine and the hardware way better than a general purpose API like OpenCL ever could. Optics has already existed for a while and we all know it's fast, but now that the Blender Foundation optimized all the fancy algorithms in the render engine cycles and thus gave us Cycles X, we get such an amazingly well optimized rendering pipeline on the software side. Let's take a look at what kind of a difference that can make in some benchmark scenes. So first off we have the iconic BMW render. We are seeing a 6 second jump for both CUDA and Optics performance on the 3070 Ti, Blender 3.0 taking only 63% and 75% of the time respectively. This is a pretty decent result, there has been a speed increase of about a quarter and that's pretty good. But I mean 6 seconds really isn't that much though, is it? The good thing is, Cycles X is set to perform better on more complex scenes. Let's take a look at the classroom benchmark, which is moderately complex. Here we see a mind-blowing improvement of a minute and 14 seconds faster for CUDA in Blender 3.0. I mean, what? The CUDA render even beat the optics render time in 2.93. And the optics render in 3.0 also manages to shave off another 30 seconds compared to 2.93 resulting in a 20 second render. Blender 3.0 only took 32% and 40% respectively of the time that Blender 2.93 took. I mean, these performance gains are absolutely insane. The same render is running in a third of the time, even though we didn't change the API, just the render engine. When I first started doing these benchmarks, I was really blown away. I mean, not only is optics performance really good, I mean, it was always really good, now it's even faster, but that also CUDA performance is this great really is a feat of engineering. And it means that everybody can have faster renders. Not only people that have access to optics and already have fast renders, but people that have only old hardware and that have to use CUDA also have now way faster render times. But of course, not only people who have older NVIDIA GPUs need to rely on CUDA, there are also some features that are not supported by optics and thus 
people need to rely on CUDA for that. And also Sheepit Render Farm or some community render farms like Sheepit need to rely on CUDA as well because there is no way to support optics. I mean, there is some technical limitation probably. But if you don't know Sheepit, it is basically a community render farm where you render for people and people render for you. This is amazing for cutting down render times on long animations. And there you also only have access to CUDA. And because you are bound to the CUDA API if you're using an NVIDIA card, it means that any performance gain you can get from the render engine means that more frames can be processed more quickly on the render farm. I have one more benchmark scene for you. It is the Barcelona Pavilion scene. I like to include this one because I feel like it represents the complexity of a real world project pretty well. Again, the CUDA render in Blender 3.0 shaves off over a minute and the optics render manages to finish in a very quick 26 seconds. It's baffling to me that a render can take 2 minutes and 25 seconds using CUDA and Blender 2.93. And through optimizations in Cycles X and Optics, the same exact render can take 2 minutes less. That's only 18% of the time needed, just through software optimization. These results really show the importance of the software side of 3D rendering. And a lot of the times I see people just talking about the hardware side and just talking about new GPUs and just talking about yeah, performance per watt and stuff like that, but the hardware isn't the end-all be-all of rendering performance. And the software side really is more important than most people think. And in my eyes, it's even more important than the hardware side. Especially when people don't have access to the newest and most expensive hardware, and especially in a time where GPUs are costing double what they should, it is really great to get some more performance out of old hardware and have some more longevity in the parts you already own. I often see hardware reviews online where people use Blender to somehow represent the compute performance of a device where they don't include the Blender version or don't include what kind of API they were using. And if you don't disclose that, your benchmarks basically are useless. I recently found a video by a channel called MaxTech and it's supposed to be a comparison between the M1 Max GPU and a laptop of a similar form factor which has an RTX 3080. The host proceeds to run CUDA and Blender 2.93 on the RTX 3080 and compares it to the Blender 3.1 Alpha on the MacBook Pro with metal support. The results are that the MacBook performs slightly faster than the 3080, but he literally compares two totally different cycles architectures and he could have used optics as well on the 3080 instead of CUDA, so his results are completely useless. I mean, the confusion is somewhat understandable because the Blender UI also really doesn't do a good job of explaining the difference between optics or CUDA in any way. So it really is hard if you're not into Blender to know that there is a huge difference between these two. So if you review hardware, please make sure to test the same Blender version on all devices so the results are comparable. And also make sure to at least use the fastest API that is available on that specific device. If you don't take different Blender versions and different APIs into account in your review, then you will have some very confusing results and probably mislead your viewers. To sum up, Blender version 3.0 and Cycles X are really, really fast. And that's amazing. Not only for people who can now have insane speeds with Optics and Cycles X, but also people who can now have blisteringly fast performance using CUDA as well. And that just gives more longevity to old hardware. And that really just shows that the hype behind Blender and the Blender Foundation is justified. In my eyes, Blender really is a leading example in how well open source software can work. And that really is amazing. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any thoughts on Blender 3.0 or Cycles X, please just leave a comment down below and I'll definitely read it. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye.